Black Pattern Traders, uh, November 18th, Thursday, which is great because we have 24 hours until the CME <clears throat> closes. That's when I think we'll probably get some kind of relief to the top side of low volume weekend, <clears throat> easily to move the price in the market out. Excuse my throat, guys. My throat is cooked today in the morning. So this quarterly view app that's been supporting us for about 24, no, more like 72 hours, right? <clears throat> Three days, give or take. Um, it's eventually going to give out. Somebody's algo, somebody's bot was programmed to just keep buying this is VWAP. <clears throat> I can't see this holding up much longer. So, short term, I still do think we're going to go to to forty um, to sixty uh, sixty three sixty four thousand dollars. I can't see us not retesting the breakdown. Overall, on the higher time time frame, it actually wants sixty sevens, but that's a lot. It's a little far fetched. So I'm not going to even say that. <clears throat> right? You want to see enough price action between the two points so this to me cannot be the lower high there isn't enough price action in between this was like a micro retest you need to see price action in between the two points right point one point two a lot of price action right point one point two you know there's a lot of price action between these points there's no price action between this and this which makes me think that <clears throat> even if we go down <clears throat> Say we say we do go down to fifty to this order block, right? To fifty set. We're gonna go for a lower high. <clears throat> so the idea that we're taking so long to dump makes me think that this is the highest probability trade we're gonna have. <clears throat> the one I drew from like two weeks ago. <clears throat> Guys, I'm really sorry for my throat. <clears throat> this one. So um, daily order block. <clears throat> Let me get rid of all this and just put on the uh, monthly V web. Okay. Daily order block. Deviate the previous low. <coughs> right? Um, the micro range is already cooked. Uh, MRH and MRL, right? Micro range high, micro range low. Completely cooked. You could tell that we already broke right through it. So I'm just going to delete this. We do not need it anymore. <coughs> so a clean chart. Your half point should be swing low to your swing high. Again, if I irritated you guys because of my uh, throat clearing, I'm sorry. All right, that's your midpoint. Your midpoint is 63.5, so you want to make sure you get above that. <clears throat> so SH is <clears throat> your range high, swing high, swing low. Let's rename this. Range high, range low. Let's make it R. <clears throat> there you go. Daily order block, swing point, I mean, sorry, sweep the previous low, deviate, and come back up. <clears throat> when we get to this point, this is going to be the deciding factor. We're going to reject. If we do, I'm targeting all the way down here, forty-nine dollars to $51,000. I put it already in the Discord. I'm not aiming for anything over here <clears throat> at all. And I'm going straight for this consolidation. So, right here. Very simple. Daily time frame. Daily time frame. So it's not a small little time frame. You have daily order block. Went up, came back down. You retest the daily order block. You made a higher high. Deviated the higher high over here. Trapped your longs. <coughs> Trapped your longs. Came back down. You broke structure. Where is structure? This is structure. market structure make this red you break market structure down here we tap the order block again tap this order block again I'm gonna name it <clears throat> so you guys could actually see it's a very simple high time frame analysis make this green daily order block tapped once tap twice go up you make a lower high this is a proper lower high this isn't a lower high for me this point over here I, the one that we did a couple of days back <clears throat> this doesn't make any sense to me so i'm looking for that third shoulder a third poke something on the lines of one two three and i wanted to see i wanted to see this two three but instead we dumped so now i'm thinking the third is going to happen somewhere down here 
between sixty three and sixty five thousand dollars. So it'll be one, two, three. Then, unfortunately, <clears throat> down here. I don't know where the one to one extension will take us, but let's let's get, take a look. One to one extension. If we do happen to stop here, it takes you to fifty three thousand dollars. The golden pocket is at forty six. It's a little too low for me. I don't like that forty six number. So let's uh, let's hope that we retest range high. <clears throat> at sixty six, sixty seven dollars, sixty six to sixty seven thousand dollars, which puts us at forty nine thousand dollars, which is perfect, beautiful. Okay, is this too sloppy for you? I'm sorry, but I'm trying to draw a visual to show you that BTC loves three pokes up and down, just the way it is. It loves it. It loves it. <clears throat> poke one, poke two, poke three, and then it just flew. Right? It just loves doing these three pokes. Um, <clears throat> and how can you differentiate between each poke? You need to see structural break, <clears throat> right? So this poke on top and poke two poked above poke one. This is poke one, right? This poked under poke one, poke two, poke one. You also made a higher high, right? Makes sense? Like this. That was your higher low. This is your higher low. Then you expand it. <clears throat> anyway, we're not here to be Picasso. I'm sorry. So ideally... You want to see a deviation of <clears throat> um, the current swing point. And the reason why I think that it is very imperative to assume that we're bearish on the micros is because, guys, you do not deviate a deviation, right? This is your deviation. Go to a clean, I'm going to go to a clean chart. I already, see, I already, had it, I already had it drawn out. I really wanted the third poke to be the top side. Hit the daily order block, touch the tread line, and then carry on. But I guess we didn't get that. Hold on, I got to get a clean chart. Of course, I don't have a freaking clean chart anywhere, guys. God forbid I have a clean chart. Okay, here you go. <clears throat> clean chart. Let me show you guys something. Go to like a, a small time frame. Four hours, good enough. And draw one tread line from <clears throat> the main low. So you have your 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 swing low over here, and you have your swing high over here, right? Okay. All right, so <clears throat> look at this. Regardless of which swing point you use, right? Whether you use this one that led to the expansion, or whether you use the, the higher low that led to the led to the equal highs, you still deviated that. So when you deviate and you trap shorts down here, you just gave everybody the opportunity to get out of those shorts by coming right back down here, right? So technically speaking, <clears throat> how is this bullish? If you're giving people the exit, it's not, guys. It's not. If you come down and you revisit your deviation area, more likely than not, you're going to put in a lower high. So grab the grab the closest swing point to yourself, which is here. Swing point all the way up to the swing high. And then tell yourself you're probably most likely going to have a hard time getting above this line. <coughs> there you go. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Right there. Hard time. Now, if you get, let me give you a bullish scenario too. If you do happen to get above the sixty-three, sixty-four thousand dollars, you're going straight for that sixty-six, sixty-seven. There's definitely a VWAP there that I was talking about. This is where the previous day VWAPs come in, come in hand. Very important. You could do the previous week too, but <clears throat> the previous days are very important right now because usually what you want to do before they kill structure, you want to get rid of all the, you want to tap all the daily VWAPs. Uh, most important one right now that we have is 66, I think, and 60, 65,000 to 65,400, which is, again, mid-60s. Again, everything falls back to mid-60s, guys. Everything falls back to mid-60s. So prepare for it. Prepare for it. If you do happen to get a move to the top side, I don't see us getting above this line. Worst case scenario, tread line, come back down. Now, if we do happen to get above that, you're going to get rejected off this part over here, most likely. Last line, but not least, it's going to be the 67 right here. No, this one right here, 67.4 to 66.4. Now, I'm giving, I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you. I'm not telling you that, hey, short every single level. No, be realistic, right? That, that, that's not what I'm here to tell you. Uh, or draw a big box and tell you, hey, guys, short this whole box. That's going to be a little silly, right? No, I'm not saying that. But probability is with the bears at the moment. Any poke up is worth 
to punt the short. I personally can't short. I'm not in the mood to short right now. I don't want to watch it. I can't see us getting above this red tread line. And if we do happen to get above the red tread line, we're probably going to go and do some kind of fuckery over here. If you do a little bit of a zoom out, you take your, you take your horizontal line and you put it across, right? This is your four hour. That's your swing point. This is your swing high. This is your trap longs. And this is your failed retest. So more likely than not, if we do happen to get above that red line that I just showed you, you will <clears throat> do something like, let's just say you get above like this, and then you're going to die. So you can retest the range high. Then you'll have a proper three tap pattern, which is going to be your one, it's going to be your two, and this is going to be your three. I cannot see us getting above that 67K mark. Not until we go lower and we'll start like taking care of all this ugly price action down here, <clears throat> unfortunately. And don't forget, these are very, very clean lows. Very clean lows. We've never, ever done anything with these lows, guys. Like, unfortunately for me to say. And, and don't forget, my, um, my good friends, I'm probably the biggest bull tard you guys have seen in Discord, right? There isn't anybody that is more annoying when price action goes to the top side, I'm always screaming, bull this, bull that. I'm telling you, be careful. This is not something you want to... Don't be cute with this. This is not safe, in other words. I don't know. These are the old oscillators. I can't even look at this shit. <clears throat> Where is this thing? Yeah, here we go. This is like the safest... This this is really macro. This is the safest um, <coughs> macro... scenario that i possibly have i will go all in on the market when it comes over here when this price when this price dumps and comes down to this midpoint i'm probably going to be fully invested back into crypto i took a lot of money out invested it into um, a second project in, in real estate we didn't close yet that's why i've been kind of mia from <clears throat> the mornings so i tend to i'm probably going to leverage my condo and uh, throw money back into the market, like heavy mar heavy money. I mean, like life changing money if it actually pans out. Because this could be life changing money, right? If you take a nice little, don't ever do this. Don't ever take this advice. This is the stupidest thing in the world that I'm about to say. But I know that I'm confident in my work. So, unless obviously I get screwed with fundamental news. But anyway, don't ever ever take advice from anyone that tells you leverage something to invest into an asset. It's the stupidest thing, especially uh, a, a, an asset that is in crypto in crypto markets. I will leverage my condo um, because if this ends up being a generational bottom where this is your low and this is going to be your higher low <clears throat> and you have your two points, this move over here, whatever low we get between, I don't know, see how we get it at 40,000 or 45, it will be the last bottom before six figures. So you don't have to go crazy and take the money and put it into altcoins, which are very high risk, high reward. You could just leave it in BTC knowing that you're going to double your investment. BTC is not going anywhere, right? The volatility of BTC has pretty much slowed down compared to altcoins. Altcoins do 30 to 40% swing points. BTC does 5 to 10% swing points, unless it's like on a trend or a tear. So you buy some BTC between 40s, anywhere in the 40s. You DCA in 49, 45, 44, 38, whatever the case is. Your average, your average entry is going to be 35 or 36,000. I mean, um. 45 or 46,000 for that specific batch. <clears throat> Open up a new account, document everything, log everything, whether it's 10,000 or whether it's 400,000. The idea is the same. Don't do anything. No stop losses, obviously, because this is spot. If you start start looking at spot, uh, stop losses, you might actually lose your freaking brain. At that point, you sit back, you come back in a year, you come back in six months and tell yourself, did we make an all-time high? Are we going to be able to go back to 90,000? So I'll move from down here to 90,000, you already doubled your investment. Take your money back out, go pay your taxes, pay off your, your whatever, wherever you got your money from. Personally, that's what exactly what I'm gonna do. Pay off my my, my, uh, my my condo leverage and call it a day. This is not financial advice. I wouldn't advise anyone to do this. I'm confident in my trading model. That's why I'm doing it. I've done it before with credit cards in the past <clears throat> and I've actually lost money. 2018 and 2019, I leveraged credit cards. They're called balance transfers. I did that. I lost my ass. I really did during the bear market. I lost a lot of money and I lost leverage money. I promised myself I'd never do it ever again. And here I am telling people that I'm going to do it again. But I'm a little bit wiser this time around, so I'm hoping that it pans out. I don't see us breaking this, guys, ever. I know we're, I know, listen, there is a possibility. I'm going to actually, you know what? Let me take two minutes so I can show you guys this, this little beautiful 
uh, situation that we could could have. I got to go to the gym too, and I'm stuck. <clears throat> Listen to this. Quarterly VWAP. I know it's 15 minutes, the video, but I really hope you guys are staying t towards the end to see exactly what I'm about to say. Now, there is a possibility that this could be the last final shakeout before the move to the six-figure range. I'm pretty confident BTC is going to six figures. A lot of my Wall Street buds <clears throat> are calling it too. And they've been spot on with a lot of investments that they've given me tips about. So back in 2017 and 2018, when we bottomed out here at, at BTC, you see how we had this quarter of the view up get tapped? <clears throat> Basically, the real bottom for BTC was here. This was the bottom. But we needed to do a shakeout. Basically, a shakeout and a reaccumulation range before we expanded. So let's put this line here, this red line here. Where did we have the shakeout, which went from 6,000 down to 3,000? But it was vicious. It was violent. It was pretty fast. And then we accumulated for about four or five months down here, or six months. It was at a previous quarterly VWAP, right? Okay. This got tapped. This got tapped. This got tapped. Mind you, a few percentages off still counts, you know, cl close enough to being tapped. Now, <clears throat> again over here. So, this was your bottom. I'm making it red again. This was your bottom. And all of a sudden, we had that BitMEX um, situation with... Um, I don't know what happened, but liquidation engine, I don't know what they were, they were talking about a few years back during COVID. Anyway, where did we go, guys? We went back to the quarterly view app. So we had one quarterly view app here that got tapped. We had two quarterly view apps here that got tapped. We tapped it, and then we started our bull trend. So now, let's assume, assume, guys, that we are, <clears throat> we are roughly going to get a black swan event, which, whatever it is, government-driven, China-driven, fundamentally-driven, liquidation engine driven doesn't matter just giving you guys a heads up i highly highly recommend everybody this this line is never going to change right take a take a horizontal line and do this and have this on your chart have this on your chart don't ever delete it the way you have your weekly charts the way you know we, your weekly horizontal lines your your monthly levels have this line never deleted type qtr quarterly p q t p q t r v web Previous quarterly VWAP, put that there, leave it there. Don't mess with it, it's low 40s. Whether it happens here or whether it happens to take these lows, doesn't matter. You know that when price goes onto this, say between plus minus 2% of this box, it's go time. It's go time, it's not the time to be afraid to buy, it's the time to be buying the blood. Like I don't know how else to express this, don't be scared to buy the blood if we do happen to go back to that quarterly VWAP. And the reason I'm stating stating this is because they're not going to give you an easy entry. They're going to make it look very violent, scary, to the point that everyone's going to be calling for lower. And even if it goes down from 49, 48,000, I'm sorry, from 41,000 down to like 38, who cares? $2,000. The upside is massive. Imagine buying 38,000 BTC with a target of 100, 120K, right? Again, you don't have to do you don't have to do leverage. You could even take four thousand dollars, two thousand, one thousand dollars. Doesn't matter what you get. It's not about the amount of money, it's about the entry, right? This, personally speaking, will be probably in my eyes the higher low, the macro higher low. And if you take a little bit of your Fibonacci levels, stop texting me for Jesus Christ, man. Take your Fibonacci levels. And where's your golden pocket? <clears throat> Low 40s. Where's your 72? Where's my 72? Jesus Christ, I'm about to throw my computer out the window. 72 is <clears throat> $39,000, guys. So just keep that on, keep that in the back of your head, in the cap, back of your mind, rather. These quarterly view ups got tapped before the start to the bull market. Now, excuse me. What happens to this? I don't even want to talk about this unless we really if we can get some kind of crazy fundamentally driven news that's going to destroy BTC and break this low. It's, it's not going. It's not. It's not going to happen. But if it does happen to break this low, I'm not buying this. I'm waiting for this. All right. Anyway, let's not talk about that because that's the probability of that happening is so slim to none. It's not, probably not even realistic. So guys, keep that in the back of your mind. Quarterly B web marketing and charts. Don't ever delete it. Leave it there. It never changes. It doesn't hurt. Keep it there for a mental visual reminder. Reminder, if you see it every single day, you're not going to be afraid to buy it when it comes. 
right? If you if you look at it for like the next three, four weeks, three months, if it happens to ever come, you won't be scared to buy it. So just leave it on there. Another thing I want to show you guys, the daily TMA bands. I made a video yesterday. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to, to pop it in for some weird reason. Man. My computer's been giving me problems. Okay, so here, look at this, man. Break above daily TMA. <clears throat> Get out of this. Break above daily TMA, come down, test mid, deviate out to green, and then pump. So we have a break above daily TMA, test mid. I still think we're going to go to the top side. Go to the top side. Probably going to get rejected somewhere here, where it's going to be. And then we're going to come right back down, and we're going to test the green. So another thing I want to tell you guys now, since now since you, you guys do happen to have the TMA bands that I have, Oh, I don't have, I didn't update them over here. Jesus Christ. Uh, do I have them somewhere else, maybe? Nope, I don't have them here either. That's great. Anyway. Take the daily TMA green part. Every day this changes, by the way. So this is going to be a little bit more work. And have it on your screen. Have it on your screen. Because you know that if price does happen to come down here, it will offer a bounce. Now, it didn't, it offered a bounce here, for example, but this bounce ended up being a lower high and then died. So what happens if we have to come down here first to then go up, then do this? What happens if that happens? It, it, it could potentially end up being like that, but I think we're a little more bullish than before to do that, right? Example, see we do happen to come into this bucket and then we're going to have to come back up to retest this. And then we're going to do something. Just say we do something like this. And then we'll take your extension. And then your golden pocket is $38,000. Your one to one is 46, right? So these are gonna be your two points of interest, 46 and then 38. I know this is kind of crazy talking, but I'm, I'm speaking macro. This is not gonna happen overnight. You're talking about within the next maybe four weeks, but these are the levels that you need to watch. You do not want to lose your daily TMA. Do not want to lose your daily TMA. You lose that, you're troubled. You're probably going to end up going down to the weekly. Where's the weekly? Weekly is going to be roughly about $44,000 right now. $44,000. Get rid of everything. Weekly is $44,000. Three day is $50,000. Two day is $54,000. You see, all these TMAs, these mids, they're not going to break off the first attempt. They're not going to. They're going to always offer a bounce. Whether it's a weak bounce or whether it's a low bounce, doesn't matter. They're, gonna, they're going to offer a bounce. So just be prepared for it. Look, the two days, the two day, the two day mid is the green, is the daily green. So more likely than not, you're going to get a bounce between $48,000 and $54,000, which should bring you back to the top side, which we hope that is not a, a lower high. If it is a lower high, then you're doomed and CRV just collapsed. And I'm in a pretty heavy CRV long. And that is a proper lower high. Hmm. Yeah, guys, this market sucks. This market's bearish. Be careful, guys. Let me see if I'll... Oh, this is Binance. I don't care about mine. Oh, God, the damn flow died too quick. Everything, everything is everything just retraced their pumps. Algo, that was a crazy. I don't even know what Algo did over there. That's that's nuts. I feel like he just took all the liquidity that he possibly can just to die and come back to one thirties. ETH BTC. Jesus Christ. Did this take all the highs? Oh, thank God. ETH USDT. Oh my god, this looks so bad. Guys, this looks very bad. This looks so bad. I don't know how else to say it. This looks extremely bad. Jesus Christ. 36 to $3,700 is very reasonable for Ethereum. Go to 12 hours and see what's up. Yeah, definitely, man. So we're probably going to get a bounce somewhere down here. <clears throat> low 40s 4,000 if it comes 
um, back up to the neckline, which is up here, 4,600, which in hopes will bring in a nice short opportunity to go back down. This is gonna be a short opportunity. You have one, you have your deviation, then you're gonna get your right shoulder soon. Be careful in this market, guys. Don't be a hero, don't be cute. This price action is very bad. Um, do not short over here though, I'll tell you that much. <clears throat> do not short here at all. But just be cautious because BTC does not look too hot. At all. And just wait for the deviation. I told this to you guys in a previous video that if you do happen to deviate and reclaim this bottom swing low at $57,000, you punch your longs. This is going to be such a beautiful long opportunity because if you deviate and come down here and then you reclaim this, you're, you have endless amount of targets. You could just basically split your targets between three, four different um, um, marks, 63, 64, 66, 67, and then you can save a bag for all-time highs in case we do happen to go up. But the, the, RR, the, the RR down here is massive, 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 right? We already went down, what, 15% from the top? It should be at least 15%. Yeah, 15%. So you're not really going to just freaking free fall and go down 35%. You're going to get your nice little bounce back up um, to, take some, to take some of the liquidity on the top side before you make either a lower low or make a higher high. So if we do happen to see this reaction, guys, I'm going pretty heavy in longs. But these are scalps, man. These are scalps. I'm not going to hold them up. I'm going to get rid of majority of my longs at sixty-three or $64,000. But be careful with BTC. Only thing you need to remember is <clears throat> now it's the time to turn off all your sell signals, being very serious. This is exactly what I do to catch lows. Because I know people ask me, how do you know to catch that low? Turn all your sell signals off and just start watching your buy signals. You want to see a buy between 10 and 2 day. Forget the lowers. 10 and 2 day. Maybe if you're risky, use the 7 hours. Otherwise, 10 and 2 day. You start getting buy signals at the 10 and 2 day, between 10, 12, 16, 18, 21, daily, 2 day, you start punting longs. That's the way I am. That's, the, that's what I do. Because eventually, one of these longs is going to be correct, right? One of them is going to be correct. And this was correct, right? You punch a long over here. And this was correct, right? This is the time to start punting, start watching buy signals. Highly recommend you start doing the buy signal strategy. Because even if this thing goes down for one more like, <clears throat> somewhere here, guarantee you get another buy signal here. This is going to be a, a buy that's worth taking if it happens, right? Especially if it comes from a 12 hour, right? 21. I don't know if we have the 21 still out. There we go. 21. Um, definitely, definitely. Don't forget, guys. The buy signal is not going to tell you that that candle is the buy or the low. Sometimes it does, but majority of the times it will not do that. You need to assume that when you get buys, that means that this range box that we're in, it's ready to move to make a shift in market structure. So then you go to your lower time frame and you find a good RR long setup, right? Sometimes you're going to catch the wick with the buy, but most of the times you're not. Like, for example, when I caught the low down here, I think it was the 10 hour that I used. I don't remember what it was, but it was definitely sub. Yeah, it was a 10 hour that I used. I caught this. And I caught this, but I didn't enter on the wicks over here. I entered over here on the retest. This, I entered probably somewhere over here. Thirty, I think it was 30, 33 or 32 or something like that. I didn't catch this at the bottom. I didn't knife catch this. But if you see that multiple 10-hour candles have closed positive after, it's great. Ooh, nice pump. Let's go, guys. Give me that New York pump, baby. Give me that New York pump. Let's go. Come on. That's exactly what I want to see. <clears throat> yes let's go baby pump me nice move guys nice move nice move let's see if we get rejected let's hope not four one six eight. come on Where's my TMA? Bro? Nice, break the 15 TMA. Come on. Oh my god, another rejection. So fucking annoying, guys. So annoying, man. We can't even get above the one hour, right? We got yeah. You see, we couldn't even get above the one hour. The one hour is a key for 
a trend shift. It's so annoying. Unfortunately, guys, nothing you can do. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't want to make the video too long. If you see any price action in between here, <clears throat> one hour, be careful. We had such a hard time getting above the one hour TMA mid. So if we do happen to get it above it and go into the red zone, be very careful, guys. And um, pretty much it, right? I don't have anything else to say. Four hours already. Oh my Jesus Christ! A four-hour TMA mid is already at sixty-three thousand. That's terrible, guys. That's so bad. You know what's you know what's gonna be funny? <clears throat> if we do something like this, I don't know. It's probably gonna be ugly. But I gotta grab a, a bottom somewhere. I can't even grab a bottom. This just looks disgusting. I can't even grab a bottom. Whatever. Just leave that out for the time being. There's nothing for me to grab. But if we do something like this, where we go straight up, we break out of this tread line to, to take all these shorts completely. I know this is a this is far fetched, but hear me out. Take out these shorts over here. Hit the VWAP. The VWAP is at sixty six. I think we said. What do we say? Sixty seven thousand dollars. Sixty say sixty eight. Sixty six point eight to sixty seven point two. So imagine we break to the top side. Take out these shorts. Fill the VWAP and then collapse. How pissed off are we all going to be if that happens? It's going to be my exit point. Though. I'll tell you that much. I'm getting rid of my fucking my um, my altcoins. All right, guys. Long video. Sorry. Hope the video is well explained. Trade safe. I'll be on in a little bit. A couple of hours. I'm going to the gym. And then I'm heading out to the fields and be back by, say, around 3, 4 o'clock noonish. Cheers.